If extraterrestrials exist, they would come from the far edges of the universe. Their vast spacecrafts may already be en route to our world, and there is no way to know when they will arrive. Many think that this scenario is possible, including researcher Nick Pope, who has worked with the British Ministry of Defense to investigate UFO sightings. There's no reason why intelligent extraterrestrials couldn't already have started their journey. It could be uh, a year's time, it could be a month, it could be a week, they could arrive later today. Is it possible that extraterrestrials are already also watching us? Are they planning a visit? And for what purpose? Sooner or later, we're going to see some kind of signs of extraterrestrial life. We need to prepare. And time may be running out. Aliens may already be heading towards their target. Earth. But some alien hunters are more optimistic. One of the most famous hunters believes that aliens will be peaceful. Seth Shostake has devoted 50 years of his life to SETI research, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The American astronomer is convinced that his body of work will pay off. They're like a trillion, so that's a million, million planets just in our galaxy. It's like you bought a trillion lottery tickets. You know, a couple of them are going to be winners. So it just strikes me as inevitable that there is other intelligent life out there. Someday, we may be able to actually communicate with extraterrestrial civilizations, but are they already trying to get in touch with us? To find out, SETI researchers use radio telescopes, like the Allen Telescope Array in California. These telescopes can receive acoustic radio signals from deep within the universe. We point them in the direction of nearby stars, which we think might have planets, which might have life, which might have intelligent life. And we just look for signals that are coming from those directions, signals at one spot on the radio dial that would tell us, hey, you know, I don't know what they're saying, I don't know what they look like, but they've built a radio transmitter. And once upon a time, a signal just like this one reached Earth, 1977. The Big Ear Radio Telescope of the Ohio State University has its antennas aimed directly into space. Using these antennas, the telescope could capture every radio wave lying in its orbit. And suddenly, it received a strange signal from space. Astrophysicist Jerry Amon was working on the Big Ear Telescope. He could hardly believe it when he analyzed the recorded data. In those days, all the data were just printed out as numbers on a big printer. And he would just go through it and look, for, see if there was anything interesting that had happened the night before. One morning, he finds a big signal, and he gets so excited about it, he writes, wow, next to it. This wow signal came from the constellation Sagittarius, 200 light years away from Earth. With a 30-fold standard deviation, the signal was strong enough to be heard over the background noise of the universe, and it may have been sent out by another civilization. But the wow signal was never detected again. To this day, it is unclear if it is a result of something natural or if it was caused by something else. At the SETI Institute in California, Seth Shostake and his colleagues are still looking for recent signals. The astronomers evaluate data from radio telescopes all over the world. To date, they have not found any evidence proving that extraterrestrials exist. Therefore, many scientists criticize SETI search methods. See, we look for radio signals from intelligent uh, planets, but that's looking at the wrong frequency. Why should they use old-fashioned radio to communicate? The alien hunters have not given up. To finally get in touch with extraterrestrials, some SETI researchers think that we should play a more active role in communication. Instead of listening to distant signals, our own messages should be sent into space. 
if you send to some nearby stars, so they're not terribly far away, 10 light years, 20 light years, then maybe you get a response while you're still alive and, and can enjoy a response. It would not be the first time that astronomers have sent a message to aliens. In 1977, the Voyager 1 probe made its way into space. Since then, it has reliably sent back data and images from our solar system. Precious cargo is stored on board. The golden record, a copper disc that holds music, images, and sounds from the Earth. <laughs> Greetings recorded in 55 different languages, a way to kindly introduce ourselves to foreign civilizations. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Herzliche Grüße an alle. Bonjour tout le monde. Konnichiwa. O genki desu ka? Hola y saludos a todos. In 2012, Voyager 1 became the first probe to leave our solar system. It has flown further into space than any man-made object ever before. This cosmic message in a bottle will travel even deeper into interstellar space. By 2025, the probe will run out of its energy supply and continue into the cosmos uncontrolled. Would the aliens ever find these spacecraft? I don't think so. They're about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle, right? And they're dark, and, and their, their transmitters won't be working then. So how are you ever going to find these guys? I mean, it's like you know, looking for, a, a, I don't know, a, a little bit of flotsam on the Pacific Ocean. You're probably never going to find it. Acoustic signals are already being sent out into space. The most famous signal was the Arecibo message in 1974. The message created by astronomer Frank Drake used binary code to provide information about human biology, the population on Earth, and tell the recipient exactly where the signal originated. So far, we haven't received a reply from aliens. Seth Shostake thinks we need to be thinking bigger. In fact, he wants to offer big data to the aliens. The more information they receive, the better they will understand us. I would send the internet, actually. I would just send everything on the internet. I mean, if you walk down to the beach and you find a message in a bottle and it's one sentence, you may never figure out what that message was about. But if it was, you know, a thousand books, well, you, might, you might figure out a lot more. But others think that these well-meaning messages would make us incalculably more vulnerable. Enemy aliens might leverage these communication efforts into a full-scale attack. I think it's a, a rather silly idea to send out powerful beamed messages um, indicating our presence. Who knows what's out there in our galaxy? It's like being a four-year-old in the middle of a dark forest. Uh, does she explore and learn the situation? Or does she go running, screaming through the forest, saying, Monsters, hello, everybody, I'm here. Critics say that stopping these messages is the only way to prevent a human catastrophe. Before proceeding, there needs to be a greater scientific discourse about what these messages should contain and who is allowed to send them. I think we should hold discussions, serious scientific investigations and discussions of the pros and cons before we be messages into space. Early projects like Yuri Milner's are already underway. For the best message that could be sent to extraterrestrials, a reward of $1 million is up for grabs. Though we previously also warned against sending messages, Stephen Hawking now supports the endeavor. It is time to open our eyes, our ears, and our minds to the cosmos. If extraterrestrials received our signals long ago, now it's too late for us to hide. Any society that could do that, any society that could come here and threaten you, they've got bigger antennas than we do. They can already pick up our television, our airport radars, all sorts of stuff. So we're already telling them we're here. Pandora's box might already be open. 